subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. of Joel and with me your science facilitator Opoku is here welcome back to a new year a new life and a new world now you all welcome back again to having me in your homes now I'll give you a couple of seconds for you to rush and get your notepads as we go into something today for BS8 BS8 Eight. Form twos, where are you? Are you ready? So today, the topic for discussion is almighty machines. 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 Now, before we go to that, let's know the objectives for today. By the end of the lesson, the people will be able to, one, define the term machine. Two, identify the types of machines. Three, list the groups of machines and explain each one of them. Four, explain the concept of liver. And then five, identify the types of liver. You know, this topic has two parts. Where we go the theoretical part and then we go with the calculative part. So for the first time this time, we will talk about getting to know what is what. What is the term used? What does it mean when we say this? And then when you are done understanding these terms, when I meet you again on the same machines for BS8, then obviously, my dear ones, we will be talking about calculations where I will have a whole lot of slides with empty blanks because I want to do it with you that I care so much about. Machines, what are they? If somebody asks you, give me 10 examples of machines, what can you say? Have you ever thought of the wheelbarrow? Have you ever thought of the, um, um, the bottle opener? What about the Caesar? What about the police? What about, um, let me think why, machine, machine. Can I talk about a car? Can I talk about a moto? Um, what about a tongue? What about, you know, all those things. I'm only teasing you to what your appetite for today because you're going to digest and feed on it. What kind of machine is this? A sewing machine. No other brand than the local cherished singer brand sewing machine. Why do you have to go for a singer or a sewing machine? If you can sit in your home with your needle and your thread, and then you can just do justice to your clothes. What is the essence of you, Kofi, Ama, and Ekuya? going to use a nail cutter other than using blade or a small knife or whatever sharp material you can use why do i have to stop using my edible bowl or pot and go for a blender why do i have to put the load in a wheelbarrow and push it. Have I thought of the reason why I'd have to sit in the car other than trekking or walking? This is the day for you. We are going to do justice to that. A machine is a device that helps or allows us to do work more easily and faster. A machine is a device that allows us to perform or do a particular work easily and faster. If I'm walking from here to Nima, how many minutes will it take me? If I pick a car from here to Nima, 
but it will only be the same number of money that I use in trekking or walking. If I want to exercise my muscles because I want to grind in the earthenware bowl or pot, how many minutes will it take me? And how many minutes will it take me to blend while the blender is in the kitchen? What about using my washing machine to just do my laundry? If I could sit and then do justice with my arms, it's all about machines. Machines. If all the items or gadgets that I mentioned are able to help you out there to perform a particular work faster and easier, then it means that that's part of that gadget or that thing called a gadget that helped you to perform that work is what is called a machine. It can also be defined as a device that allows a small force at one point to overcome a larger force at another point. A small force at one point being used to overcome a larger force at another end. Okay, I'm thinking of something. A small force at one end being used to overcome a larger force at another end. So the force that I use is called my strength of me. That's how I term it in everywhere I call it. My strength of me. And that force is my own energy. And that force is called my effort. He was effortless in doing that. That means he didn't take so much of an effort to perform it. My dear, let's get focused to science. Auntie Jackie will come and help you with English. So effort is the smaller force that I use to overcome the bigger force called the load. The load is the work that I want to do. So here, if I have my fancy kinky in the blender, I add my ice cubes. I add a bit of water. And small sugar. Not so much. I put in my ID milk. And then banana. And then our almighty. Yes, you know, any fruit that you want. I tap or I just turn the knob of the blender or the motor. And then whoom, 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 whoom. The content of the blender is being moved up and down, up and down like that, and then work is going on. How many minutes do you think it will take me to blend that kinky? And to put that kinky in a bowl and then mash it with my hand. Mash it with my hand. Will I even get a firm and nice and sweet texture and then appealing to the eye? In a blender as i would have done with my bare hands or probably put it in an edwin bowl or pot that is machine that is machine in the blender the work will be done faster and easier it's because it lessens my effort so me being able to do or go for that bigger load of a blender to do that work of a mash kinky and then having a bigger load at the end, that is the work that has been done. And they're using a small force. And now applying a very bigger force. And the end getting adjusted. Which one will you go for? The boys in the course. Examples of simple machines or devices are wheelbarrow, cutlass, ladder, pair of scissors, pickers, bottle opener, corn mail, a plow a pulley and then the rest types of machines there are basically two main types of machines which are the simple machines and then the almighty complex machines well then it's a simple machine a simple machine in my own words i'll say the machine that use simple gadget or simple parts to perform work a simple machine is any simple device that helps to do work, having simple parts to do the work. 
Simple machines are machines that are used almost every day in our daily activities. They can be constructed easily, have few or no moving parts, and also have a fixed point called pivot or fulcrum. Every simple machine doesn't have so much or so many parts that will be so cumbersome to operate. They are simple, perform work simple, they do things simple, and then they always have a turning point or a pivot or fulcrum. Do you know what an egg slicer is? I need to just boil the egg. Open the egg slicer. Put the egg on the egg slicer. And I bring the other metal part of the egg slicer. And my egg is sliced. What about put the boiled egg in hand, pick a knife, and decide to cut the egg into pieces? You wouldn't have a nice shape of the egg with the egg slicer as you would have with the knife. The knife would be basar. You wouldn't, the yolk is out and it's like that. It's not even appealing to the eye, so it doesn't even look nice for you to eat it. But the egg slicer will just keep things in shape because it's one time it's done. Groups of machines. Complex machines, on the other hand, are machines that require so many parts that would have to all operate and also have certain parts that are called a turning part, which is the fulcrum or the pivot, to perform a job or a work. So a complex machine is also said to be any machine that has complex parts and also has moving parts that performs work but this one do not perform simple work so they do complex works for example um the co um, um, mechanized um sewing machines the combined harvesters you know these ones are big machines that move or that has big parts that all move around and then the work is done the exercise are the knife you no know, simple then they are gone groups of machines simple machines have been grouped into the following categories so we will go straightly on the first one as we do the second one the next time with calculation then you know what machines we're talking about we have the levers or levers if you say liver then it's like the liver in the stomach of a human being or an animal so you say levers then we have inclined plane that looks like a triangle inclined planes are actually very pleased beneath where you want to put the load so when i have a car let's say this is the car this is the load on the car and then i want to put the load out of the car or of the car i need to put or elevate the inclined plane to this side and the load will slowly be moved on the inclined plane downwards if i want to get the load from the floor to the car the same way I slowly roll it up, 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 and then voila, it comes here into it. That is that. Then we have the gears, or what we call the gears, but please say gears. The wheel and the axles and the almighty screw lever. A lever is a rigid bar that turns around a fixed point of fulcrum. A lever is a rigid bar that turns around a fixed point of fulcrum. So it can be in a bar that moves around a fixed point. So if this is a fixed point, and then this one is moving around it, then a lever is happening. Or a fulcrum is also the turning point. So you have a fixed point, and then it's also moving, or it's moving it, then it's also the same thing. It can also be defined as a simple form of machine, which is made up of load, effort, and pivot. Load, effort, and pivot. All levers contain a load arm, an effort, and a fulcrum. All levers contain a load arm, an effort, and a fulcrum. The fulcrum is also the same as a turning point or the pivot. Fulcrum is also the pivot. The load is the object that is moved, and therefore the load arm is a distance from the fulcrum to the load over again the load is the effort or is the object sorry that is being moved so if i'm moving this from here to here this becomes the load 
the low distance is how I'll be able to move this pin from this side to this side. The distance I'll cover, the low distance. So the load distance is the object that is moved, and therefore the load arm is the distance from the fulcrum to so the load arm is also the distance, whatever. The effort is the force that is used or applied to move the load, and therefore the effort arm is the distance from the fulcrum. The effort is the force. How do I now move this pen from here to here? I need effort. And the effort is a strength or force I'll apply to move or push this pen to go to that side. And so we say the effort is the force that is used to move the load and therefore the effort arm is a distance from the fulcrum, the pivot. The pivot, okay. Part of a lever. Part of a lever. A lever has three main parts, namely the L, the F or P, and the E. The L is the load part, the pivot or the fulcrum is the F, and our almighty strength of effort. Definition of terms. Effort. It is a force applied at one end of a lever to overcome a load. The effort, if I push you from behind, or I'll push you when you are facing me. The strength that I use in pushing you will determine how long you go from me before, if possible, you will fall. If I throw something across a place, the energy or the effort that I use in throwing the item will also determine how long that thing I've thrown will go before it now falls. Pivot or fulcrum. It is a fixed point of a lever on which a turning place, a turning takes place. So if I have a fixed point here, something is rotating around it, that is the pivot or the fulcrum. So this, and then there's a fulcrum, then it's turning around. That's the pivot. Effort distance. It's a distance between the effort and the pivot. So the effort and the pivot. The effort is the effort that I'll use. The pivot is the fixed point on which something turns around. So effort distance, the distance between the effort and the pivot. Load distance. It is the distance between the load and the pivot. Now, let me talk about this. If I have a man who is pulling a truck, where is the effort? Where is the load? Where is the pivot? Think about it. I'll come for my answer very soon. It is the distance between the load and the pivot. All levers, the positions of the pivot, or in all levers, the positions of the pivot, effort and the load determine the class of the lever. We can have first class, second class, third class. These are the three main classes of levers. And the location of each of the parameters, whether load, effort, pivot, will tell us what kind of machine or lever it is or what class it belongs to. Types of levers. Uh -huh. There are three different types of levers, namely the first class lever, the second class lever, and then the third class lever. First class lever, second class lever, and then the third class lever. First class lever. Uh -huh. Every first class lever has been displayed on your screens. The first class lever is a lever that has the pivot between the load and the effort. So you have E, P, L. E, P, L. Now, what item or what gadget has the pivot, a fixed point that rotates between the effort and the load or the load and the effort? Can I talk about a secretor? 
Can I talk about a pair of scissors? Can I talk about mention them? A plier. Okay, let's see if they are true or not. Second class lever. Second class lever has the load between the effort and the load and the pivot, sorry. So before we go to second class lever, let's get the examples under each of them. So now I have the pivot, the turning point in between these two. The load is here. The effort is here. The pivot is in the center. If I have a scissor and then I want to cut something, okay, this side is the center of it that is fixed. And then whereby because it's fixed, these two are able to move. So a pair of scissors is a typical example of a first class lever. A secator, which I explained the last time I met you, is also an example of a first class lever. A plier is also an example of a first class lever. The funny thing about all this is that they all look like a pair of scissors because they have so many parts or every part in common. Let's go to talk about the second class lever. Second class lever. Second class lever has the load between the effort and the pivot. You know, whilst I talk to you, I think about it because I want to have hand on experience or hand on um, examples for all of us to know. Second class lever has the load between the effort and the pivot. The load between the effort and the pivot. The abbreviation for remembrance of the second class lever is P L E R E L P. So whenever you have it this way, the load is in between second class lever. The common one that is mostly used is the P L E. P. 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 So, whenever you have the pivot in there, then it means it's a first class. The load in between is a second class. The effort in between is a third class. The, okay, the best example of a second class lever is a wheelbarrow. Why? Look at where you put the items as the load in a wheelbarrow. Look at the other end where you hold the handles of a wheelbarrow. Look at the opposite end that also rotates on a fixed point. That is a second class lever, a wheelbarrow. What we call trog, what's called track, is also an example of that. Because as I push or I pull, as I push or I pull, the same emphasis or terms are being applied in them. The effort always travels a greater distance and it is less than the load. Absolutely. If I want to move this swap come from here to here, I need to lift it up carefully to cover a distance. And because I'm covering a distance, they will say I performed work or work has been done. And in every work done, no distance covered, no work done. So every effort is always bigger than the load it actually covers. Other examples are bottle opener, paper cutter, knife crackers, etc., etc., etc. In the second class lever, the effort distance is always greater than the load distance. So here, the effort distance is always forever greater than a low distance. This simply means that a heavy load can easily be raised using a small amount of effort. That is true. If I have a very, very big item I want to carry onto a truck, onto a wheelbarrow, if I don't have an inclined plane, how do I do that? On with the inclined plane, I slowly move that load on the inclined plane 
till they get up and then the load is done. In the same way, if I have a load in a car and I want to also bring it down, because it's heavy and dangerous and then it's, if I allow it to just push it that way, it may hurt somebody. I roll it by coming down the inclined plane so that I slow the pace or the movement of the load and then it comes down. Third class lever. The third class lever has the effort in between the load and the pivot. So the effort is always found between this and that. Load and effort. Load and effort. Have that too in mind. Now, let's go over again the whole type of loads, the classes, and what have you. Okay, always have it in mind that machines can always be seen in BS8. It is a Form 2 lesson, BS8. So let's go on and talk about it again. What is a machine? Per this, we have a sewing machine. And the sewing machine does so many things. I will try to sew a shirt with a bare hands. How many minutes would that take me? Will it be two hours, two days, two weeks, two months, or two years? That will depend on the kind of shirt I want to put up. With a machine, that will be fast if only my raw materials are ready. I don't need to sit down and then move my needle and then my thread over and over again on the shirt or material before I form a shirt. That brings us to machines. A machine is a device that helps or allows us to work more easily and faster. A machine is a device that helps or allows us to work more easily and faster. So, if I'm able to do something in the quickest time possible, without any so much effort being applied to it, that thing that I did is a machine, and a machine has done the work for me. It can also be defined as a device that allows a small force at one end, which is called the effort, to overcome a larger force there's a load at another end or point. Examples of machines include the simple machine, which are wheelbarrow, cutlass, a ladder that will climb on it to get to a height, a pair of scissors, a secator, a plier, a pickaxe, bottle opener, a sickle, a corn mill, a plier, or a plow, a pulley, and the rest. All these are examples of machines, types of machines. There are only two types of machines, and these two types of machines are simple machines and complex machines. Simple machines are machines that have simple parts, which also have simple moving parts that helps to perform the work easier and then quicker. A simple machine is any machine with simple parts and simple movable parts that helps the work to be done easily and quickly. Complex machines, on the other hand, are machines with complex parts and complex movable parts that helps to do complex work more easily and quickly. Uh -huh. So I believe by now you know all that it entails. Simple machines are machines that are used almost every day in our daily life activities. They can be constructed or made easily, but also have few or no moving parts and also have a fixed point called a fulcrum or pivot. Groups of simple machines. Complex machines, which I've explained earlier, so we can have the bigger machines that do so many things like 
the tractors, the bulldozers, the combined harvesters, the planters, and the rest of these are also complex machines because they rotate or move around complex parts. Simple machines have been grouped into the following categories as levers, inclined planes, GS uh, wheels, and then axles, and we have screws. Uh, we are doing levers today. The inclined plane, the gears will come with the calculations of machines. And let's go to the lever or the lever. The lever. No, it's not lever, it's lever. A lever is a rigid bar that turns around a fixed point or fulcrum. So every lever is in a rigid bar which rotates around a fixed point or fulcrum. It can also be defined as a simple form of machine which is made up of load, effort, and then pivot. So somebody asks you what is a simple machine? Nine, it, or a lever, it is any simple machine or simple form of machine that consists of the load, effort, and the um, pivot as its part. All levers contain a load arm, an effort, and a fulcrum. The load is the object. The load is the object that is moved, and therefore the load arm is the distance from the fulcrum to the load. Let me take this again. The load is the object that is moved. And therefore, the load arm is the distance from the fulcrum to the load. So if I have this load that I want to move to this side, the distance from the turning point, rotating part, the pivot to the load is what is called the load distance. Or the load. The effort is the force that is used to move the load, and therefore the effort arm is a distance from the fulcrum. Part of a lever. A lever has three main parts. We have the pivot, we have the effort, and we have the almighty load. Definition of terms. Effort is the force applied at one end of a lever to overcome a load. So whenever I talk about effort, is the force that someone needs to apply at one end of a lever so that a load can actually be overcome. Pivot, on the other hand, is the fixed point of a lever on which a turning, again, pivot is the, or the fulcrum is the fixed point of a lever on which a turning place or a turning takes place. Effort distance is the distance between the effort and the pivot. So as you push the effort, then the pivot rotates. As I push the wheelbarrow, the wheels move. And so the distance between the effort and the pivot is the effort distance. Load distance is also the distance between the load and then the pivot. In all levers, the position of the pivot, effort, and the load determine the class of lever. That brings us to classes or types of levers. First class, second class, and a third class lever. Every first class lever has the pivot in between the load and the effort, or the pivot in between the effort and the load. And I said we have example, as the pair of scissors, a secator, a plier, and then any other thing that looks like a scissor, in which, okay, we also have um, a surgical scissor. See the way it is. It's also a scissor though. I was just trying to place math and add more examples to it. Second class lever has the load between the effort and the pivot. The abbreviation for the remembrance of the second class lever is PLE of ELP. The best example is Hibaro. The wheel is the fulcrum, the handle takes the effort, and the load is placed in between them. The effort always travels a greater distance and is less than load. So whenever you talk about the effort, that is where the load or the, that is where the whole energy is applied for a particular work to be done. So if I want to perform a particular work and then I don't put in the effort, how do I get that? You know? 
even when you want to pass your exam so well, what do you do? You sit down. Even though you don't apply any strength or any effort, but you being resilient, you being able to resist any uh, attempts to go and play, watch movie, play games, move around with people, enjoy, go on a shopping spree without money. You go and do window shopping in town. But then you want to sit on your butt and then read your book. It's the efforts you put in to achieve the success of passing your exam so well. Other examples are bottle opener, paper cutter, not crackers, and then etc. and many more. In the second class level, the effort distance is always greater than the load distance. Because as I want to push a wheelbarrow, I need more energy to be able to push the wheelbarrow there and there to rotate on its wheels and then it moves. This simply means that a heavy load can easily be raised using a small amount of effort. That's very true. Let me fetch water into um, this bigger um, fractal or whatever bottles, okay? And then I put them into a wheelbarrow. I need small effort to make the wheelbarrow move. And the wheelbarrow is moving on a normal condition of the land, whereby it is not hilly. I don't need so much effort. It needs so much effort when I'm actually climbing then that means I would have to stress and push further. Just ask as you sit on the bicycle to move the pedals of the bicycle. When you are moving on where the land is like this, on a slope, ah, it's enjoyable. You just feel the wind on your skin. But when you are climbing onto the hill, that's when you have to tighten your thighs and your legs to be able to paddle the, the whole thing, to go up and up and then it goes. Third class lever. The third class lever has the effort in between the load and the pivot. So whenever you deal with third class lever, it means you have that and then it's done. My dear viewers, this brings us to the end of another beautiful edition of me and you on Joy Learning. We are done. This is just the first half of it. I have a lot of calculations for you when I come back on the same topic called machines. There, talk about efficiency, mechanical accuracy, and then all that, whereby you have to find efficiency using the work output and work input. Multiply by 100% and then all that. So till I come into your homes, my name has always been Opoku, and the topic for today was machines on or in BS8. Till I come back and see you on the flip side, Bye-bye and good luck. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.